Good morning and welcome to the St. Bonas Chap Chap Chapel of the Solanas Casey Center on the 18th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Our presider for this liturgy is Father Fred. Today's Mass intention is for Jim Madigan. Please start the procession for communion entering from the side aisles and returning through the center one. If you plan to take communion to the homebound, please use a pick. If you don't have one, they are available in the gift shop. We strongly suggest that you receive Holy Communion by hand, but if you feel you must receive it by tongue, please wait until the end of its distribution. We now invite you to silence your cell phones and other electronic devices while we pause for a few minutes before the beginning of Mass. messed up, but at least I understand what happened. Well, he changed everything.
Let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Today is such a beautiful day on the uh, cusp of the Blessed Solanus Feast Day. Today we come to celebrate the 18th week of ordinary time. We come and celebrate together as a community in celebration of life, love, and also the love of our brother, Father Solanus. And so we take a moment in preparation to prepare ourselves for this sacred mystery. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Draw near to your servants, O Lord, and answer their prayers with unceasing kindness, that for those who glory in you as their creator and guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. Vanity of vanities, says Kohela. Vanity of vanities, all things are vanity. Here is one who has labored with wisdom and knowledge and skill. And yet to another who has not labored over it, he must leave property. This also is vanity and a great misfortune. For what profit comes to man from all the toil and anxiety of heart with which he has labored under the sun? All his days, sorrow and grief is his occupation. Even at night, his mind is not at rest. This also is vanity. The word of the Lord.
words. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. You turn man back to dust, saying, Return, O children of man. For a thousand years in your sight are as yesterday, now that it is past. Or as a watch of the night, if today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. of them in their sleep. The next morning they are like the changing grass, which at dawn springs up anew, built by evening wilts and fades. If to the day The second reading is from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth, for you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, your life, appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. Put to death, then, the parts of you that are earthly, immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and the greed that is idolatry. Stop lying to one another, since you have taken off the old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed for knowledge in the image of its creator. Here there is not Greek and Jew, circumcision and uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, slave, free, but Christ is all in all. The word of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to share the inheritance with me. He replied to him, Friend, who appointed me as your judge and arbiter? Then he said to the crowd, Take care to guard against all greed, for though one may be rich, one's life does not consist of possessions. Then he told them a parable. There was a rich man whose land produced a bountiful harvest. He asked him, What shall I do, for I do not have space to store my harvest? And he said, This is what I shall do. I shall tear down my barns and build larger ones. There I shall store all my grain and other goods. And I shall say to myself, Now as for you, you have so many good things stored up for many years. Rest, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this night your life will be demanded of you. And the things you have prepared, to whom will they belong? Thus will it be for all who store up treasure for themselves, but are not rich in what matters to God. The Gospel of the Lord. I was going to get up here and talk to you about possessions, about how we covet, how we take hold of things so quickly and so often. But something struck me in the first reading, the torment at night, the struggle at night of carrying resentment. Now, I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one here in this uh, room, in this chapel, that carries resentment. That, too, is vanity. The things that we hold against each other, the things that we hold in our hearts, in our minds, against another person because of something we believe they have done something that we understand or have come to believe they have done, whether they have done it or not, we hold the resentment in our hearts. I recently was at a uh, physical therapist for working on something with my uh, hand, and this the physical therapist said to me, they were working on my shoulder, and they said, you have a lot of knots in your shoulder. And they asked me, do you carry a lot of resentment or anger or frustration? And after getting a little perturbed by the uh, rather personal question from the physical therapist, I thought to myself, well, yes, sometimes I do. Sometimes I carry various different things in my body, in my heart, and in my soul. Though I try not to, it's hard, isn't it? The physiological damage that it has done, the weight that it physically, that we physically carry, is something very different than possessions. The possessions you can get rid of very easily. You just donate them to the services center on Medbury. But the resentments and the fears and the anxiety that we carry every single day is a lot harder to get rid of. And that's why we're here today, is it not? When we come to worship together as a community, do we not carry with us all of our burdens, all of our struggle, 
Do we not bring them to prayer? Do we not ask God for strength to overcome the challenges that we are facing? That's why you're here. That's why I'm here. Not only to give, great, to give glory to God, of course, always, but to also ask God for help and guidance. Yes, priests do pray for themselves sometimes. We pray for others, but we pray for ourselves too because we struggle because we are human. We carry resentment, we carry anger and frustration, but we also carry joy and love and laughter. I want to ask you, have you recently received a hug from an individual where your body just felt amazing after that hug? You could feel the love. You could feel the joy. And you had this tingling kind of just radiate through your body. Our emotions carry its physical weight. And so that's what we're here today to experience. The physical love of God in the body and blood of Christ. The physical love of community shared at the table, together, as one. And so when you come to the table today, bring with it your resentments, your frustrations, your angers. Release it to God. Let the burden be carried by Christ let the struggle be carried by Christ. But also bring love, bring joy, bring laughter and peace. Bring all of what you are and who you are to the table. Because that's what we are asked of every time we come to this table to celebrate together, to love together. So I ask you, will you bring yourself today to this table? In faith and in love, let us call now and stand. Let us stand now and profess our faith. I believe in one God, Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth. All things visible and invisible. I believe in the one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, God, born of the Father, and
This is, this is what we believe. And so in this faith, we now call upon our God in need with our intercessions. Our prayer response is, giver of gifts, hear our prayer. Giver of gifts, hear our prayer. For the gift of love that recreates us to be an inclusive community in Christ, we ask in faith. Giver of gifts, hear our prayer. For the gift of honesty that frees us to speak the truth in love, we ask in faith. Giver of gifts, hear our prayer. For the gift of respect that will help us honor each person's dignity in life, we ask in faith. Giver of gifts, hear our prayer. For the gift of moderation that we may use wisely the earth's resources, we ask in faith. Giver of gift, hear our prayer. For the gift of generosity that raises us above greed and selfish pursuits, we ask in faith. Giver of gifts, hear our prayer. For the gift of eternal life that all dead whose lives were hidden in Christ, especially for Jim Madigan, for whom this Mass is offered, may rejoice in glory. We ask in faith. Giver of gifts, hear our prayer. For the people of Ukraine who are suffering, may they feel God's abounding love and strength. We ask in faith. Giver of gifts, hear our prayer.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of this sac spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy. Through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and the eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O oh Lord, until you come again. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, 
Francis, St. Clair, Blessed Solanus, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be and may pray. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and As the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus. Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with the Spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. <laughs> 